All right. I'm going to call the meeting to order. It's now 7 p.m. If everyone can please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If anyone's interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. Anyone wishing to address the board would like to come up to the microphone when we get to the section of public comments. If you could please clearly state your name and address. I see only two signatures. First, I'd like to approve the minutes of December 30th, 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting. So moved. Oh, make a motion to do so. There's a second. Second. Roll call, Peter. Absent. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the January 3rd, 2022 reorganization meeting. Second. Roll call. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the January 2020, January 22nd, 2022 workshop meeting. Second. Roll call. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. I guess I'm the treasurer, so I'll give the treasurer's report. Um, nothing really unusual for this month. Um, I think everyone, if you wanted, there's a copy of the bills up front. I'd like to make a motion to approve payment of the bills for January 2022. Second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. If you've signed in and would like to make a public comment, if you could please again come up to the microphone and state your name and address clearly. Yes, yes. I think that microphone is turned off. If you could please turn it on. Thank you, Sue. Hi, right, good evening, um, Chairman McCarthy, members and board supervisors. My name is Calvin Hackman. I reside at 8 Palatine Place here in Stroudsburg. I'm a relatively new resident, uh, moved in in the fall of 2020. So um, this is my first meeting. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had my, my uh, first opportunity to interact with any of the supervisors. I had had um, some opportunity to interact with Susan back when I had applied for a building permit. And uh, that was a very pleasurable experience. Unfortunately, my most recent interaction with uh, Supervisor Celeste wasn't so pleasant. Um, and that's why I'm here tonight. I, I come tonight to express concern about the very late billing of the McCarthy Engineering Services charges uh, to the town of Marion, which were evidently approved and paid uh, about 15 months ago but um, didn't manage to get billed to us until December 23rd. What a very nice Christmas gift for us to find in our mailbox at Christmas time. Um, I, I don't know, haven't yet been able to figure out exactly why these charges were sitting around for 15 months and not getting billed to us. Uh, Susan told me that they were found in a folder um, I guess everybody here is on a first name basis. So, um, Irene told me that, uh, you didn't have authorization to charge them to us until some other governmental authority gave you that authorization most recently. So I guess as a taxpayer, I would ask, uh, why didn't we know that they could be billed? And, um, what else is there that the town has paid for that should be being billed to citizens and hasn't been billed. Um, and I guess I would also ask, uh, you know, sort of who's in charge? 
Um, the information that I got from Susan consisted just of a very short note telling me to pay these charges to the uh, town. And enclosed were two invoices from McCarthy that basically had uh, the names of a couple of people at McCarthy who had supposedly performed these services and some dollar hours that they had put in and some dollar amounts. Um, I, I guess it's only fair to tell you that I'm a retired partner of one of the global Southern accounting firms. I spent my life auditing organizations like the town of Marion uh, and public companies and private companies. And uh, I have to tell you, if any one of my clients had paid a bill from McCarthy Engineering based on an invoice like you all paid that bill, I would have written them up in my audit report. So I called Susan to see what was going on. And um, Susan said, well, you need to talk to the treasurer. So I left a message for Irene. Uh, when I didn't hear back after a couple of days, I sent a letter to Irene. I also sent a letter to uh, Jerry McCarthy. Um, Susan got back to me. Um, and uh, I guess was surprised that I might be questioning why I was supposed to pay some invoices that were being billed to me. So I explained to her that I thought there should be some documentation with the invoices that explained a little bit about what McCarthy Engineering was doing for me, or at the time, what McCarthy was doing for the town, which has now become my obligation because some other governmental authority told you guys that you could build citizens for it. Um, Susan, I mean, Irene seemed surprised that I should want something other than an invoice. And um, we had quite a discussion, didn't we? No, we didn't have a discussion. Well, I, I think we had a discussion. Um, I finally uh, said to Irene, um, if you build one of your legal clients for services rendered, wouldn't you put some explanation on the bill of what you were billing them for? And um, I don't know, maybe that helped to clear up my, my issue. But at any rate, she finally agreed that she would get me some documentation. And I got that documentation the other day. Um, and now I'm in conversations with McCarthy Engineering to understand why it is that it took McCarthy or it, it cost me, according to McCarthy's bill, twice as much to get my stormwater plan reviewed by them as I paid to the firm that actually prepared the stormwater plan. I'll just give you that as a data point of what kind of charges you're getting out of McCarthy. Um, I, I'm, I'm sort of hopeful that my future interactions with the Board of Supervisors will be on a more professional level. And um, I would like to, to hear from somebody uh, why it was or why it is that there are billings from outside contractors that this town pays, which are supposedly due from the citizens but can't get billed for 15 months. And um, I'm gonna to suggest to you that I notice in one of your handouts here that you elected some auditors. Um, I don't know how much money this all adds up to Irene, but uh, in, the, in the world of auditing, there's such a thing as cutoff, it's called. Mm -hmm. And it's designed to make sure that all the transactions for a 12 month period get recorded in that 12 month period. When they don't get recorded in that 12 month period and they get discovered in a subsequent period, generally the auditors, if, if those amounts are material, generally the auditors make you go back and restate those financial statements, which is a pretty embarrassing thing 
for a municipality or a corporation to do. When a public company does that, they have to file extra reports for the Securities Exchange Commission. And generally, the stock market doesn't respond too favorably to that. So I don't know if your auditors will make you restate last year's financial <clears throat> statements or make you restate two years worth of financial statements. If they do, that'll cost you extra money. Um, and if they don't, I don't know why they wouldn't. But um, I would say be kind of a black mark on the town of Marion that the financial statements that you've been publishing and presumably filing over in Harrisburg weren't correct. I'll just leave it at that. But I would, I would just like to, to hear here on the public record why it is that we pay bills <coughs> with very little documentation. First of all, I noticed that you approved to pay McCarthy $6,000 more tonight. And I would ask you, <clears throat> does anybody really know what McCarthy did for that $6,000 other than sending you a bunch of invoices that got some people's names on them with some hourly rates on them? They actually know what they did for him. Mm -hmm. And um, so why was it that you paid bills 15 months ago that you didn't know that you could bill to the citizens or that you were supposed to bill the citizens are and you, just found that out now. Oh, all right, all right. if you're done, I'll, I'll give a good explanation. So your last statement is correct. We just found out. And I could tell you in 2016, the person that was the treasurer quit. That person left no instructions. The subsequent person that picked up the treasurer's position had no instructions, no information, and did what they could figure out to do. When you take this position, there are no classes, there is no instructions, there is nothing. All that's required is that you are a resident of the township for one year and you're of legal age. So each and every person coming into this position has to kind of find, kind of figure it out for themselves. So in 2020, when I became the treasurer, I had some basic knowledge of QuickBooks, at some basic knowledge of accounting. Then the pandemic hit, that put a halt on everything that we were doing. We also had some information that was not put into our system. We had to do a year's worth of data entry. That was quite cumbersome. We also had to hire an outside firm to help us with that information and to look over the books and help correct things. So between the pandemic and that year of data entry and other things that we had to deal with throughout the pandemic that caused a delay. It was late last year, I think it was Sue, that it was brought to our attention that these are items that should be billed for. Once it became known that these were things that we could do, we then checked with our solicitor to make sure that that was okay. We got the green light to go ahead and bill back for the past three years. We provided the information from McCarthy Engineering and we started going through a large pile of information. This township is not a full-time township. It is part-time. I am not here all the time. It required the work of myself, Sue, and our assistant treasurer several days to go through the material, read over it, and compile it and find a system where we could send letters out to the people and adequately bill for things. So I don't disagree with you that there was a delay, but there was a reasonable answer for that delay. And during that phone call, you never gave me the opportunity to explain it. As far as your concern about the books and, and uh, the uh, financial welfare of the township, I think we're in pretty good condition. I've now had two different accounting agencies take a look at everything. We're a cash basis type of a system. So if there's any issues, if the auditors want to go through our system and say, okay, these were charges that should have been placed in 2019, 2020, et cetera, then that's something that we'll have to deal with and we'll have to figure out. But there are tasks I had no idea could or had to be done and had to learn that those needed to be done in order to process where we're at. If anything, the only thing I could add to that is between 2016 and 2019, every single taxpayer in this township has paid for services done on other people's property. To me, that's the tragedy. The tragedy that the township has footed those bills. I don't wanna pay for work done on anyone else's property, but that's what every single person in this room has done. And now we're trying to recover those funds from the proper people. 
So I can apologize to you for having a miscommunication, but the phone call that I had between you and I was not exactly pleasant. And I did have you on speakerphone with Sue in the office. So I apologize for that. You did cut me off and did not give me the opportunity to explain anything. So here we're explaining it and moving forward, we're gonna try to have clear signage with respect to any charges that may be um, incurred to any resident when they have services performed. The other part of the things, you make the assumption that we just blankly look at the bills and don't question anything. There's plenty of communication between this office and McCarthy Engineering. We send emails, we make phone calls, and we clarify all the charges. Anyone at any point in time can make a request and take a look at the bills. They could take a look at the books. There is nothing to hide here. There's nothing done in secret. Anytime you wish to look at anything, you're more than welcome to. And if you would like some clarification, I am more than happy to show you. I'm also the right to know officer. So we have excellent communication between McCarthy Engineering and we do make plenty of phone calls to clarify. Again, I apologize to you as far as not giving you more information, but at that moment, I didn't have anything else. We sent an email. Janice in your office was kind enough to provide the information and I forwarded to that, that to you. In addition, it looks as if that original letter had been mailed to your address as well. Yeah, that, that original letter didn't say anything about there being any charges, by the way. And, okay. I, and again, I apologize okay. about that. But Chairman McCarthy, how, how long have you been on the board? I'm not Chairman McCarthy. This He's is Jim not Brooks. Here. Peter's not here this I've evening. Been on, I've been on board for about a year. A year. So we got an all new board here? We do have all new much. board, but Jim has had experience in other boards. You would. Excuse me. Your, Irene's your, been, your excuse, me. excuse me. Irene's been on the board for two years. Peter McCarthy has been on the board for four years. Okay. You, you, I'll just make a couple more comments while I sit down. Your, your explanation about there not being a good handoff between treasurers uh, tells me, number one, that the town of Marion doesn't apparently have documented policies and procedures. They do now. We do now. They do now. It's nice that you got everything fixed up. We, and that's what um, our goal is. And I apologize that you haven't been to other meetings. You know, I could say, look around the condition of the building. This is what we've been handed. And we as a board decided that we're going to implement policies. We're going to implement procedures. And we're not just going to say, I'm done with my position and I'm, I'm leaving and I'm not telling anything. It's been a deficiency. And we don't understand why it's happened that way. But we want to work, and we have been working very hard to correct it. Well, I, I'll just respond to your comment about look around the building. Yeah. I'm a big fan of minimal government, so I think it's great that you're reusing a building that was built for some other reason, that you didn't build a $5 million town center with a bunch of fancy offices for you guys to sit in or not sit in as the case might be. So as far as I'm concerned, this building is great. When I came here to get my building permit, it was during the pandemic. I had to stand on one side of the door. Susan was on the other side of the door. I think we both had masks on at the time. And, uh, you know, Susan did a great job. So uh, I, don't, I don't see anything wrong here. What I see wrong is that, that the work behind the scenes, I, and I really have to speak. I, I can't account for anyone Thank else's you. behavior, but we are trying to do the best that we can with what we've been handed. And this is where we're at today. And thank you for your time. And anytime you need any further clarification, please don't hesitate to give us a call or stop in. I think Leon, you had a comment. Oh, <laughs> thank you. All right, items for discussion. Dutch Valley Stormwater Maintenance <coughs> Agreement and Land Development Agreement. I think, Sue, so you just sent over that email. Is that correct? What do you mean? I just sent over email. I just well, saw some agreements. So here. Here. Yeah, okay. the, these are these are finished. So this okay. is kind of the, the last piece of the puzzle. <laughs> And um, last month we, we voted to conditionally approve the land development plan subject to the last letter. I don't remember the date yeah. from McCarthy, but um, we had to create these two agreements and they're, they're complete now. And uh, I just wanted to get on the agenda for a vote. Excellent. Thank you, thank you. That was my only question. Could we make a motion then? Did, uh, did you speak with them about charges? I know he was concerned about the charges that were being levied. Well, 
I'm, I'm not sure exactly what charges you're referring to. Are you talking about the review charges for the land development plan? Or are you talking about I think the, the inspection? Yeah, that the inspection, the observation. Yeah, so, there was he, he questioned <clears throat> uh, the three percent right. charge for inspections. Mm -hmm. And I mean for I think it was it was 1.8 million. What, well, 1.8 was the cost estimate. Right, that was the cost. Uh, okay. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of inspection to do for a 1.8 million foot project. So uh, a three percent charge is actually, I don't want to say it's not on the low side, but I think it's actually. So you don't know if he spoke to anybody about it. he was concerned about the cost and wanted to know if you specifically do something. Yeah, I mean, he mentioned it to me, and, and you know, I emailed, I emailed him back. If it's a less expensive job, we'll go five percent. Okay, um, there's just a lot of inspection to do. They got a lot of detention basins, storm sewer. Um, they got parking lot improvements that they've got to do. Um, you know, well, I just wondered if he had spoke to anybody. Yeah, he, okay. made, he made the request at the meeting, so right. we wanted to pass that on to, to okay. you guys to respond to it. And yeah, apparently that happened. Okay, did you feel comfortable with it at this time? Making well, you want to hold off? To I'm not an engineer, so I don't yeah. know. I don't know if that's we, a reasonable we, charge right, or not. But, you know, the other, the, but the I other, just wanted to make sure yeah. that they had spoke because he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. he sent me an email. Uh, it, it pretty much. Uh, uh be right well actually he put it in his email when he sent me the corrected um uh, the corrected cost estimate and and the thing you have to understand is this is only an escrow account so right. if we don't spend that time he gets they get that money back right okay so if it doesn't right. cost that much to do the inspection they get the money back okay thank you for clarification do you feel comfortable enough to yeah. okay then i'd like to make a motion to approve of the dutch valley storm order maintenance agreement and land develop agreements second roll call irene aye jim aye next item is the act 53537 the seo which is here this is alan madeira from brooks and biotech uh, mailed letters to the residents in the northwest district the next step is the income study. The $50 pump out inspection levy was added to the 2022 tax bills. And I believe Peter uh, reached out and is going to be hopefully moving forward as far as the income study. I think he reached out to whoever's doing that within your group. Is it Colleen, I think? Um, as far as I know, that we haven't been authorized to do that yeah. yet, but okay. Uh, I, um, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay. So you're aware of the um, pump out inspection levy? Okay. Well, if you want to vote on that tonight, then, because I'm well, not sure. Well, it, it's been entered. I'm not so sure that I'm in favor of it. So we're going to limit the time, right? No, 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 that's okay. Um, so everyone knows Act 537 is in place. We don't, we have to comply with the DEP mandate. And we did ask Alan to be here this evening. Some items that people may not be aware of. Um, I know there's been some back and forth with people uh, asking whether or not they could use their own pumper. Part of the problem with people using their own pumper involves the pumper providing us with a copy of, of their certification, a copy of their inspection. The other part of this is that there are roughly 180 homes that this particular mandate applies to. We have to keep track of all those homes. There, there's more. There's, there's more. over 500. There's over 500. There's over 500. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that's that's even worse. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was thinking the 180 from the other number. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so there's over 500 residents that uh, are affected by this mandate, and we've asked Alan to help us with that program because it would be too monumental for us to keep track of the pumpers 
their certificates, the insurance, who's compliant, who's not compliant, and when and if things were done. And so early discussion was what would be an amount previously was $100, but that SEO is no longer with us. Alan has the resources and the experience to handle this. And when we've asked Alan before, as far as have any other townships successfully managed it on their own, he can tell you there's only one that he knows of and they have the manpower. Everyone needs to keep in mind, again, this is not a full-time office that's here. God bless Sue. She does so much throughout the day, but to have her or anyone else come in to do this, it truly would, it truly would require paying someone full time. <laughs> Someone's looking for you. <laughs> <on a> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It it truly would require someone full time in order to run this program. So, Alan, if, if you could keep me good on on some of those statements that I just made as far as fees. You said so far is right on Yeah. Part. Yeah. In addition, it also requires that we re we file an annual report with the DEP, and again. It's just more work that this office is not capable of. And so essentially Alan is gonna be performing all those services for us. So if you wanna table this for the next- well, the, the question that's come up is why can't the pumpers do the inspection? Well, there's a number of good reasons. Some townships use the pumpers to do inspections. Um, a lot of townships do. Yeah. So Jackson right. Township, uh, Supply Township, North Lebanon Township, they all use the people at the pump because they're certified. Right, but it still it still doesn't it still doesn't absolve us from having to use Alan's services. Okay. Why not? Because Alan needs to file the paperwork that needs to go through no, to the, the DP. Files. No. It, 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 it's, it's more than that. It, it, it's a lot more than that. They, we need a copy of their certification, a copy of their insurance. There's a lot of paperwork that's involved with this. It's not just someone showing up to your house saying everything's okay, paperwork's filed. It, it, it is not that. If the, pump, if the pumpers would submit all the reports, if the pumpers would inspect out, um, and you wouldn't be, I guess, doing anything, then it would fall on the township, would it not, to submit all these reports to DP Correct. and Correct. kind of uh, so the the pump you know, information all together. Kind of lumping several things together. Okay. So first question. Yeah, it's called one size fits all. Hey, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. So no, no, no. Why don't you let him talk instead of interrupting? Listen to his answer, and then you can ask a question. That's kind of how the dialogue works, as opposed to interrupting him every time he's trying to talk. Is that fair? Can be. Okay. So the first aspect of it is the question of, of whether the SEO, what we call chases the pump truck or whether the pumpers conduct the inspections, okay? And the townships that do that, programs that are run that way have varying degrees of success, but the troubles that are inherent, as an attorney, you know right off the bat that the pumpers conducting the inspection are now acting as an agent for the township. So as such, they would need to be registered, which is additional administrative work. They would need to be PSMA certified and they would need to submit an insurance certificate every year. So it's additional administrative tasks. Now, just because the owner of the company has a PSMA certification doesn't necessarily mean his driver does. Some of the other deficits to doing things that way, many, if not most pumpers are loath to report any violation or any problem. They don't wanna report their customers for fear of losing business. I just had a very frank discussion with a wonderful man, Mr. Lutzenberger, Lutzenberger Septic, who explained that exact conundrum to me. Okay, this just in the past few days. So I think a lot of you folks are gonna be using Lutzenbergers. So, um, these are some of the issues. It's not because he's dishonest, but it's because it puts him in a very uncomfortable <clears throat> position. In other townships where this is done, I have found that the pumpers generally don't want the responsibility either. So there are 
are all of those issues coupled with the additional administrative aspects of doing it that way. Now, on top of that, we're in a situation here in Marion Township, from my understanding, it's quite a bit of history before I came aboard, where the township is under a microscope. Okay, I, I was not sure if I should use the word um, with DEP. DEP is um, looking very closely at how things are being managed in this township. One of the reasons I was recommended for this position is because I have a successful program running in Pruner Township for about seven years now. Jim McCarthy, who is your township engineer, lives in Pruner Township, so he's experienced it firsthand. And Tim Wagner, who is the head of the Water Quality Department in Harrisburg, knows me, knows what I have done, and frankly, I think is sitting back a little bit, backing off a little bit, knowing that things are in good hands, not on what I hope so. I'm trying, I will do my best for all of you. What I've done in the other townships that I've consulted with and the townships that I have developed programs for um, is I've spent years researching what works best in municipalities across the state. And there are some municipalities that join forces into multi-municipal local agencies. And there are, are, are others who do it on their own. But what I've found is townships who manage things in-house have ineffective programs with little or no enforcement it falls apart very quickly. I've found that townships that use the pumpers as the inspectors get 99% no problems observed on the forms. And generally, the rest of the form is blank. So no real comments, no real education, no real constructive information going to the homeowners. So part of our goal is to prevent problems and to prevent costly maintenance. I know there's a lot of issues in this township and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna go through them on a case by case basis. Another big part of it is education, helping people to prevent those issues. Another big part of it moving forward is to develop a database of what's really here. You know, what is actually here? How many systems are there? What type and what age and what are their conditions? That's gonna take seven years, I think, to, to compile everything with, with three, four year cycles overlapping. I think that I think they'll work out to seven years. We will have a 100 percent database. A pumper's not gonna do that for you. The township supervisors can't run around and do that for you. Who's gonna do that for you? Somebody has to do that for you. You need that information moving forward when the other issues of public sewer and so forth arise again. Good, honest information, good, solid information that no one has had up until now. McCarthy's Act 537 plan followed all the rules, but following all the rules gives you, I think, 25% of the so you know of what's really going on, okay? So with a, with an effective sewage management program, you'll know 100% of what's going on. And we'll be reporting that information on an annual basis to DEP, which will help hopefully to stave off all of that stuff. Super comments that I'm the better answers. Most of you don't have this. That's very that true. Is. I have municipalities that have no Act 537 plan or SMP at all. Now, the regulations came into effect in May of 1972. Yeah. Act 537 dates from 1969. I was three years old. So the requirement for a sewage management program has been with us all that time. But it's a monumental task and municipalities who have resisted you know, DEP, their strength and their their uh, backing goes up and down with their budget. When they have money, they have teeth. When they don't have money, they back off. And they pick their battles because of, you know, where the issues are. I'll, I'll mention Greenwich Township. Greenwich Township is another township that I serve that is largely rural and, and farmland. They don't have real problems, though. They, they have, I've got one little community that's got some issues, okay? Other than that, they have shaley soil, uh, things work. The biggest issue is the same as any other agricultural area that I mentioned. Okay. 
say, hey, you don't have an Act 537 plan. We want you to meet with us and develop one for the sewage management program. And the other solicitor write a letter and say, well, you come visit us at our regular board of supervisors meeting. Okay. So DEP kind of backed down because they got other fish to fry. They got bigger problems elsewhere. But this township is on the radar. It's been on the radar since long before. I've been hearing rumblings about Marion Township for two years before anybody approached me about coming here. So um, I think it's really important to show that the municipalities are going to go after stance and trying to do the very best the requirements. Question? Sure. How many farms are in Cumroot Township? A few, not nearly as many as here. A operating dairy farms. I don't know. They're crop that. farms. I don't know that. Right. Exactly. How it's many are in Marion? How many are in Marion Township? Well, how many preserve farms are in Marion Township? I don't know the answer. 53. 53. 6,000 acres. Farmers. That's great. That's great. Preserve the farmers. So I may as well. I guess you don't have my letter from two two meetings ago. You guys each got my letter. Mm -hmm. I have an operating dairy farm. I'm a lifelong dairy farm in Marion Township. Here's where I went to school. For that guy that didn't know what this building was done. This was third grade. So I'm a lifelong dairy farmer. My farm, the, the cow part of it, I have cows and chickens. My cow part gets tested, my water gets, and the farm gets tested by the, my local dairy, the state, and the federal. And the water gets tested when I start shipping milk, and it gets tested every other year by our dairy. And if we have problems, and they check the well, they check the septic, always. They don't, they don't pull the lid off the septic. Um, and my chickens, we get where they go to Bell and Evans. My milk goes to Lana Lakes. My, the chickens go to Bell and Evans and they test the water. And I don't have any problems. And I understood from Peter McCarthy that there's a thing in there in the paperwork that if you have more than 10 acres, and you have no problems, you're exempt from, for, we, I asked my pumper the last time, we pump every three years. There's a group of 10 of us that pump every three years. And I asked my pumper if he's certified and he said, yes, I am. And it wasn't Litzenberg. Right. He used to haul out of our pit, but uh, he hauled our, our septic one time. Um, not that we don't like him, Leland, but hey, the, we use Collins, and um, he's certified. I said, do you do other townships? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a certified inspector. Most of them do. Yeah. and uh, Especially the smaller guys. But I'm, I'm tested like by my dairy. I'm tested by my chicken company. And I'm I pay the guy to pump my sewage, and now I have to pay you. I have to call you and get you out there for two days until all 10 of us are pumped. What a harangue. And I have to pay you. And I have 120 acres there, and I don't have a problem because my water's tested. That doesn't seem right to me. You really don't know Marion Township. Oh, I understand. I understand what you're saying perfectly. But the thing is that all the residents have to be treated the same. No, no, no. Then One size does not fit all in this township. Then you need to talk to your congressman, not me. Yep. Well, I know congressman. These, these rules are coming from the state of Pennsylvania, not Marion Township or my office. Or McCarthy's office, or the lawyer's office. The mandate that you must pump every three years comes from the state, not who you use to pump. They don't say you have to inspect. We have to be inspected by a certified inspector, and we have that. We have it. 
You're coming in on the side. Okay. We don't need it. Okay. You give me something in writing from the state that accepts that, and I'll accept it too. From the state? Sure. I have to answer to the state of Pennsylvania. So if you can get the state of Pennsylvania to give you the pass, to give you the, 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 the ability to use that. Just my farm or the whole township? Just your farm. If that's what you're looking for, it's just your farm. No. no. One size does not fit all in this township. No. Last time I checked, Is everyone uses the bathroom. Restriction on there and we the exemption. The got problem it. isn't in the rural. You know that. I don't know anything because oh because nothing oh. because nothing's been well, done. I do. Because I do know. Nothing's been done, and I don't know the condition of the septic system because, just as Alan said, we don't have the data. I don't. I don't know anything because the data isn't here. Because if my septic wasn't acceptable, working, I wouldn't be shipping milk. Okay. I wouldn't be feeding chickens. So then if, if the if, problem here is that they're double dipping. If, if, if there's some exception, because this work has been done, then we need to get the paperwork. We need the approval from the state. That's it. We, we, have, yeah, we have no way around this. If you're telling us the other thing, the, the other thing, The other thing you have to realize, okay, this is a DEP program. DEP also regulates the installation. And design of septic systems. Yeah, when, systems. when you you if you need a septic system, you go to a sewage enforcement officer and he designs it, and then he submits it to our sewage enforcement officer who reviews it and approves it and does all the inspections. You can't have somebody that's doing the work also approving their own work it makes no sense they do it in other townships well it doesn't work Jackson you township have has a whole that. lot of more people than we do you don't to explain that it doesn't work it, 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 it doesn't make it right either just because they right. do something in another township no it doesn't I mean, make it right it's we well, it doesn't make it right they, if we do it this way either they might not be under a mandate they might feel different they might feel different. Yeah. They, they might not share your opinion. Well, so you know. Well, that's really nice. I don't know if it's nice or not nice, but it's their. It could be their opinion, and they might put this through. So, I think they do they need to find out if there's a if there's an acreage uh, exemption. We need to find out about that. Well, I can answer that. There is no acreage exemption for a sewage management program. The regulations include a section that deals with building a septic system on a property of greater than 10 acres without a permit, if the township's ordinance allows it, and if it's for an immediate family member. And then there's a whole laundry list of requirements. At the end of the day, it's, 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 not, it's not done. It's just not practical. Most townships have Most that, don't. That, that forego that. So why that's in the regulations, I can't tell you. And why it stayed in the regulations when they did it in 2000. I know. I don't understand. It's, a lot of it, it's probably some antiquated grandfather. It's, it's not thing. a missile. Yeah. It's, it's not an auto ordinance. Yeah. No. No. But I, I, I think it's only fair for me to reach out to Tim Wagner at the EP and ask him your question. You know, if you're already being tested for health and safety and water quality and all these other things, and they do look at your septic system, you're saying. They do look to see if you're well, sure. You gone. have to have. They just so, don't pop the lids. Okay, they just don't pop the lids and make you pump it out. So that's probably going to be the sticking point right there. They're going to they're going to want to know when it's pumped. Okay. So do you have a pump or septic tank? Every three years. If we do, every three years. Okay. So maybe if you just submit that inspection and and the pump receipt, I don't have to come out. But but I still have to pay the 50 bucks. That's why a problem is. Yeah, yeah it, 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 you know. it is far from, you know. Well, there's so much other work that has to be done, though. You heard it. It explained to you all the paperwork that has to be done, all the record keeping that has to be done. That still all has to be done, no matter who does the inspection. Okay? 
somebody somebody has to they have to send that information in and somebody has to compile it into a report that they can send to dep otherwise the, the pumpers aren't going to do that i do not have time to do that and i do not have time. <laughs> i don't want to have, 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 have to hire someone else how many properties are affected did you say oh, 500 have, yeah. se have septic systems on 500 them. yep yes. Yep. The only public sewer we have in Marion Township is Stonecroft Village and Dutch Valley. Everybody else has a septic system. We really don't have the problem out in the rural. In how, our how, rural. How do you know that, Nelson? Right. Because we're tested. Maybe you're tested. <clears throat> My property's not tested. How do I know My we, septic system is working? We, Right. I think you would know. Well, I would think I would know too. And, but... and, right. And some people ignore the problem. And that's. Not everybody right. pumps every right. three years. Are they sure doing that? That's true. Really, but not everybody does. Not everybody does. Well, why don't you see the number of doing it? I'm doing it every three. It's like filing my income tax. That means you're going to come out and audit me. You know, I send it to the government. They don't audit everyone. And, and this is what Alan just said. He's going to check to see. If there's any additional information so that for those of you that have these extra inspections we're going to find out if that's acceptable because we still have to be mandates and still have to file paper with the dep if that's acceptable we're going to go with that and if need be we will change the ordinance for those exceptions but at the same time we have to find out more information so i just ask you gentlemen to be a little bit more patient okay that's all we're going to ask and we're going to get the answers well, remember, one size doesn't fit all in this township. Yeah, you have the problem in town, and we're paying for it. I, I think I think there's a lot of problems in a lot of places, and as Alan said, we we don't know because it hasn't been looked into. We, we've been handed this problem. And there's a lot of working done. dairy farms in this township, mm -hmm. and they're all tested, right? Like mine. Okay. And if and if that's the case, then we're going to know, and we're going to have that information, and we're going to be able to move forward. I have to treat everyone equally. That's what, what our job entails. So the 500 includes all the dairy farms. Every it's single septic system There's in not Mary Township is on that list. It's on the list. There's not 500 dairy farms. I didn't say there were dairy farms. No, she said uh, online no, systems. 500, septic systems. 500 systems. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if nothing else, maybe we need to talk, to talk to our state legislator about at least exempting the preserved farms because you're already being inspected. You and you're, and you're right. You guys, come under, you guys come under a lot of scrutiny, and I'm sure you can't cheat because there's no way they're gonna. It's gonna happen. We get inspected by the preservation board. Yeah. <laughs> we get inspected by a lot of stuff. So I think that that may be the next step. May not be here. It may be at the state legislature right. to talk about. The, well, they the really. Do you want that inquiry to come from the township or from the solicitor rather than? I can I can send you you know some wording made that, that the solicitor can doctor and and the contact information from Mr. Weiger. I I know Tim. Do you know Tim? Yeah, it it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who it comes from. I think it's just important to 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 make the inquiry. I think it's fair. I we should absolutely. If you send me the language, then I'll I'll attach my name to it. Well, if I like what you're saying, <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm sure it would be fine, but. Really See, I don't, no, I, I don't I disagree that, with you that, yeah. that, but there are some systems in town that we know are bad. Yeah. And yeah, you know, there's, we're aware of that. But, but some of, like, like you guys are already being inspected several times. Once every three years, you're pumping, and, and we know that you're doing it. By a I think you should be exempted. I think they should be exempted, but I don't know that we can do that. Right, again. This is, this is something that yeah, wasn't okay. brought up There's to the prior board. So this is something that wasn't Jim and Irene, listen to Alan. Just before I came here tonight, the last thing I did, I went to get there before that sun went down. I did a complaint investigation on Derrick Hill. Okay? So I got the complaint through DEP. They sent me a five-page email demanding that I investigate and report back to them what my findings are. Okay? So I'm working through that. Fortunately, they know about their malfunction and they're in the process of, of putting they want to put in a new septic system and apparently they have a permit to carry her we have to work out some details there okay but it hasn't been installed yet and now we're in the middle of winter okay 
I've done, I don't know, five or six uh, sewage management inspections so far. Every single one has had either a grossly undersized septic tank, excessive solids to the point of more than more than a third, maybe more than half the tank capacity filled with solids, or both. So one of the systems was a brand new system, eight years old, that had never been pumped and was packed with solids. Okay. The the owner asked me, do we need to clean our pump tank too? Because we had a sand knob. And I said, well, not every single time, but your pump sits up on a block because any suspended solids that settle out in there, you don't want to be sucking up that slurry and sending it down to your sand knob, clogging up your sand knob. So yeah, when I come, I'm going to ask them to pump the, to pump the pump tank. I went back outside, the pump, the pumper was just finishing up and he said, you know, Alan, he said, I saw sludge before I saw the six inch block. I went right back in the, the guy's house and told him, hey, you know, you need to pump more often. You know, this is what we're trying to find here. So this is going to prevent problems. This is going to prevent problems. In other townships, I've come to people that have sand miles and things like that. A lot of you have in-ground systems or older systems that's not as much to expect. But some of these newer technologies are a lot more to expect. When I go to people, I say, hey, I'd like to inspect your alarm right here. I have an alarm. You know, or I or I do go look at it and it's broken, it doesn't work, or spider webs on it, you know. So you know, it goes on and on and on from there. We can prevent a lot of problems. We can make recommendations for, for maintenance and stuff like that. That the guy just sucking the sewage out, no matter what his certifications are, isn't doing 90, 90% of the time by my experience. There's some real good guys out there. And I think some of these smaller guys are really good guys. There's some good pumpers around here. Okay. It's the bigger companies I have to watch out for more, you know, when they send out, you know, any willy nilly driver that they have, you know. But uh, we'll look into this. I'll, I'll ask about exemptions for preserved farms. Um, and uh, I'll tell you right now with the state, you're not going to have much plot with farmers. And we're losing our senator, Argo. You're going to get Gephardt now. Well, I'll ask Tim what he recommends. He, and he said, you know, Tim as well. Because he, he was a reasonable guy. And I'm sure this is the first time he's heard of him. So this, they, they may have a policy in place that I'm just not aware of. You know, I've been doing this 32 years and I'm still learning. Well, I'm older than you and I'm still learning. I didn't know we had a problem, but apparently we did somehow. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. So, ready to move forward then? Next Tax bills. That is the county inform me the bill last week. Yep. Yeah. 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 If they need to reimburse people, if they need to people, if that's what's going to have to happen. No, work, no motions were made last meeting to yep. change anything. So I had to meet a deadline. Uh -huh. They were sent to the printer January 20th. Well, we have so just want yeah. to let yeah. you know that. It's going to be on everybody's tax bill. I know. Okay. I know. Ready to move forward? Okay. Our next item for discussion is the 2022 fee schedules for professional <coughs> services. This includes Burks and Biotech, McCarthy Engineering, Coslo Stout, Craft Co. Services, and Barley Snyder. And so this was, or this is resolution 2022 3. Mm -hmm. And you have that with you, Sue? Mm -hmm. You okay if I motion on that? I'd like to make a motion to approve the 2022 fee schedules for professional services as mentioned before. Second. Roll call. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next item is the pension plan contribution. The secretary did work the required 1,000 hours in 2021. The contribution rate is 15% of the gross salary, which is $31,328. The calculated amount for contribution is $4,699.20. I'd like to make a motion to approve the pension plan contribution for the amount of $4,699.20. Second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. 
Excuse me. I'm... Yes, thank you again, Alan. Thank you, Alan. And uh, I'm assuming you gentlemen will be communicating with each other and getting that information yep, out. Absolutely. I'll get in touch with you. Okay. Okay. Yes, yep. yep. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan, for being here tonight. Okay. The next item for discussion is the CoStars uh, Road Salt contract renewal. Uh, the enrollment deadline is March 15th, 2022 for the 2022 and 2023 season. Last year, we renewed for 200 tons. We need to take a minimum of 60% and a maximum of 140% for a 200 ton minimum. It would be 120 and a maximum of 280. I know this is an item that was discussed at the workshop meeting, and I believe that Peter had mentioned that we would like to hold off until February to just see where we're at weather-wise, and I believe what you feel that we have enough salt on hands. Okay. Just to let you know, our current price we're paying is $59.64 according to this contract. Okay. I, didn't, I don't have a price for next year's contract. That's okay. Uh, so, so I told me, uh, we generally... Next item for discussion is the Jacob Weiss poultry operation letter of credit. The request has been made by Jacob Weiss to reduce his letter of credit based on the site inspection on January 18th of 2022 of the current improvements construction. McCarthy Engineering recommends a fourth reduction of the letter of credit in the amount of $21,974. The amount to be retained is $28,161.89. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. Not okay with you? Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to approve the reduction in the letter of uh, credit for the amount of $21,974 for the Jacob Wise poultry operation. Second. Roll call. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next item is the Mervyn and Mabel Weiler letter of credit. What's the D? That's just the number. That's just the number. Thank you. Their Conrad Weiser property has been auto increased from $41,018.15 to $45,119.96. Um, there's just an error in the way it was printed up on the paper. Is that correct? What do you mean? There's a comma there. Yeah, so it should be the period. correct amount, yeah. $41,119.96. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's no motion to be made there. No. Um, we did receive a postcard, I believe, about the Zoom video communications. It's a class action settlement notification. It seems it would be worth, uh, not worth much to us for, to participate in it. And I believe Peter said we were going to switch over to Microsoft Teams, actually, this year. So, um, Thank you, Andy, for giving us uh, some info back on that. I guess what we received about $25 if we were to participate. That's that's it. Nice yeah. So it's not, it. it costs us more to talk to you about it then. So, <laughs> I didn't charge okay. it. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Next item for discussion is the Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Planning and Design. The project is in Mill Creek Township, Lebanon County, with approximately 1.4 acres in Marion Township. Currently, there's nothing new to report as far as I know. There, there actually is. is. There, there's a meeting that we're going to have on February 8th to, to gather some more information. Informational. Okay. Uh, informational meeting. Yeah. So I know I'll be able to be present because I'll be here in the office waiting for the auditors that day and I'm hoping that goes smooth. It should. So. I'll be there too. Okay. So Jim's going to be there also. I don't know if we, Peter's going to be available. Can't do I have to advertise it's it? just, no, it's just informational. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. The culvert on Marion Drive at Jacob Weiss. Um, I understand we're going to be resubmitting that for a DG LVR grant. Do you know anything about more of that? Is it being? Yeah. The, um, yeah. That, that work's all being done. Uh, pretty much actually most of it's cleaned up. Um, we're just waiting. We don't like to submit those grant applications. Bust. And nobody, they're not fresh. So we, the, the, the deadline is April. We'd like to get them in a little bit before the deadline. Um, <clears throat> and uh, all the projects are actually ready to go. Uh, we do need to get some pricing from CMS uh, for the work that's not going to be being done by our road crews. 
Um, and that's ready to go as well. We're ready to get that part, get that to them for that pricing. Excellent. That sounds fantastic. So I'm kind of glad in a weird way there wasn't delay, so we're able to resubmit it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, crossing my fingers. All right. Next item, the culvert on Marion Drive, north of School Road at Oscar Manback's location. McCarthy Engineering has provided us with a cost estimate of $59,423.79 to replace this culvert with our road crew doing most of the work. And we're just waiting for permits for this project. Correct. No new updates there. It's basically the same. It's, it's a, also a um, dirt and gravel road, I think, project. Thank you. Uh, next item is the culvert on Sheridan Road at Gerald Hoover's farm. McCarthy Engineering provided a cost estimate between 90000 to 119000 to replace this culvert. The culvert and end walls are approximately 48000 The remaining cost is guide rails. Our road crew will be doing most of this work, and we're waiting again for permits for this project. Okay. Why so expensive? I don't know. You're, you're, for a bike across the road. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you know, you got all the permits you got to get to do it. Um, you know, uh, the guys want to get paid uh, materials, you know, materials <laughs> going through the roof. For, for oil? Well, you, you got to pave the roads again. You got to repave them. Yeah. It's it's expensive. It's expensive. So culvert on right. Yeah, yeah. It, it is expensive, but but unfortunately we don't have a choice in cost. This is what it costs. We're doing what we can do. Why does it take the state so long to issue these permits? Any ideas on that? <laughs> We've been I'm, around I'm gonna have to. I'm it's gonna have to defer that question to DEP. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Just, yeah. I've been on the board for a year. You're absolutely. Right. I think you're right. Yeah. There are things that they do in between working because I know that with my son being in the insurance space and their home, they do what they do and then walk the dog. <laughs> and, we, and while we're waiting for permits, right. all these costs are, are escalating. Right. That's right. right. So yeah, well, I've been on the board for a year. We've been fooling around with this for a year. Right, but there's also uh, the pandemic, and that was put a, that put a halt on everything. So, all right, culvert on Reichert Road. The permit has been received. Again, we're waiting for to submit, submit that. Okay. Um, abandoning a portion of Shady Cabin Circle. Uh, this is the issue that Peter had with his particular property, and he had asked um, uh, George, uh, Andy George, to take a look into this, and that's something that's being, um, uh, any more conversation between Peter and Roy at all on that. It's something that he brought to the attention of, of the board and township simply because he is a township supervisor, but at the same time, it was a personal issue with respect to his property. Did Peter discuss this with you? Uh, he mentioned something at the last okay. meeting. I mean, it was kind of a place marker at okay. the last meeting. And okay. to be honest, I'm no further than I was at the last meeting. And, and, and that's funny. I think he's having a conversation with Roy about it. I think they're, yeah. I think they're talking. Yeah, um, yeah. From what I know. So, so, and just because it was brought up at a prior meeting, uh, Peter, I think, asked to have it on this agenda as well. Understood. Okay. Nothing further on that. Um, for 2022, Peter is currently making a list of culverts that need to be replaced roads that need oil and chip and cold patching. All right, on to the Eagle Disposal Contract. Sue takes a deep breath here. Um, the three-year contract expires in March of 2022 with the option to renew for one year and option to renew for second year for a total of five years. Does anyone want me to recite the, all the numbers again? Sue, do you need me to recite that? Okay. Um, they have provided free trash and recycling toters. And in the past, Andy drew up the documents and McCarthy Engineering posted this on PenBid. And this also needs to be advertised. Um, with respect to the contract, are we able to make modifications and how likely are they going to agree with it if they're reasonable? So one issue that I have is they don't call anyone if they don't come around. There is no robocall. Yeah, they uh, call the day later. A day later. So, yeah. so that's well, and it was right. a wrong message right. too. And it's it, and, and and that's that's a, that's an issue that I know everyone in my uh, area has a problem. Like 
everyone's leaving their, their trash bins out and you don't know that they're not going to come around. Mm -hmm. So including something like that, asking them to call to give us more yeah, just things like that. Yeah, yeah, we can we can make some minor modifications like that, but we can't change the price. No, no, I agree. Um, but I mean, the last meeting, the board authorized me to to draft the, the bid specs to get gotcha. them advertised. They're they're done. I just okay. had to. I looked at them today this afternoon, and they're kind of ready to go. Okay. Um, I will email them to okay. everybody for you guys to take a look at a little bit of a different format. Okay. And inserted some penalties in there. Okay. For, that was my concern. Violations of, yeah. You know, we're going to have to vote on this next meeting because the contract expires in March. So right. we'll have yeah, to we vote on this in February. We, yeah, right. We, so we'd have to, uh, I would think that, uh, yeah, there should be due. Um, and we used 10 bid the last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so they come back online. Yeah. They come back. Yeah. It's not like they're, they're a paper at a regular meeting. Right. But, so they'll come back online, but we should do that probably in February okay. That's prior my to at least prior to the regular meeting. Right. Maybe prior to the workshop meeting too, if you want to look at them there. Yes, if we get a copy of that. But they should be really out pretty soon because you know, if we get them out next week, it's down to three weeks or so until they would have to submit them. But you, and you want to get us a turnaround time. If it is a new contract that comes in, you want it to be able to have sufficient time to get set up. So we can wait till February meeting to approve this at this time. But do they need a motion to I have... think we need a motion tonight to, to put it out the bid. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. After after everybody reviews it. I'm hoping to have them to you tomorrow. So you can make your motion continue on that, right? Right. So mm -hmm. defer then until the, the bid is reviewed. So you can make your motion. Motion to make a motion to advertise. To, advertise. To put the contract okay. out the bid. All right. Like to make a motion to put the con to advertise to, to advertise, advertise. The bid, bid specifications. Okay, the bid specifications. The trash contract. Yeah, for Eagle Disposal contract then, and that will go to Ken Bid. Thank you. Yeah, we're confusing all the language there. Second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Did you get my letter that I had at the last meeting about the garbage, the plastic bags, and their sloppy practices? Yeah, and I handed one to each of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's there's lots of we issues. get a lot of complaints. Yeah, a lot yeah. of complaints, and 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 we want to work to resolve it. Unfortunately, they tend to be the least expensive. So, yeah. Okay, move forward. All right. The rental inspection ordinance proposal. This is something again we're in discussion about and uh, haven't cobbled together something that we all agree on. So this is just uh, going to go for further discussion, more likely than not, at our next uh, workshop meeting and possibly even after that. Building maintenance. Um, I will be contacting a number of contractors again to see what we could do to improve this building, um, getting all uh, costs. So that when Peter returns, we'll be able to display everything up on the board. And so we can make a good informed decision as to what to do with this building versus potentially uh, having a new location. So again, it, it's an issue with trying to get hold of contractors and getting bids for this building itself. This is something again for prolonged discussion, nothing that we're acting on at any moment soon. Uh, next item is the American Rescue Plan. $100,848.79 was transferred to the general money market account. The U.S. Treasury Department has issued their final rule. According to CELIG and PSAT's webinars, any municipality receiving less than $10 million can report the money as lost revenue without doing the calculation and put it in their general fund and use it for just about anything. CELIC suggested spending the total on one large project because then you only have to report it once. And our first report is due on April 30th, 2022. If anyone would like to look at the facts of the American Rescue Plan um, at your leisure, if you go to the PSATS website, it's psats.org. They actually have a tab that gives you more details. If you wanna read through the over 400 page uh, final treasury rule, you can. Um, but again, this is something that we're discussing at length and we're not taking any action with these funds until we can 
all agree upon how these funds should be used, used. having that um, information that those funds can be used for one lump sum and we don't really have to do anything more because we could uh, have it uh, as lost revenue is it's quite pleasant. I mean, that certainly would pay for culvert um, and we're trying to use this money judiciously and uh, move on forward. And we will be receiving an additional amount in June of this year as well. Or a playground. Or a playground. So we're, we're, we're trying to, again, use the money wisely and be smart about this. So, all right, the next item for discussion is a credit card policy. Nothing really further here. Uh, something I had worked on and I think we had discussed at one of the workshop meetings was submitted. Uh, again, I need feedback from both you and Peter about it and something to, to further work out. Um, next item is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance Amendments. North Heidelberg Township would also like to add solar farms as an exceptional use in highway commercial, light industrial, and general industrial. Marion has high commercial. Highway, highway commercial. And I'm sorry? Highway commercial. Highway, highway commercial, commercial, sorry. And, and general industrial. That's what I thought. General industrial, which is Dutch Valley. Mm -hmm. A zoning hearing would be needed to grant an exceptional use. Our planning commission recommends to the Board of Supervisors to adopt this amendment. I have no objections to that. Do you? Okay. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the planning commission recommendation to adopt the um, exceptional use in highway, commercial, light, industrial, and general industrial amendments. Come with the solar farms and that and solar farms. joint zoning. Joint amendment. zoning. Thank you. Second. Roll call, Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next there's, item. There's actually mm -hmm. on, on that subject, there's going to be a, a public hearing mm -hmm. because we need to have a public hearing mm -hmm. to enact the zoning amendment. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be in what is that, February, February 17th, maybe? It's on a. Is that the Joint Planning Commission? No, it, that, well, no, it's, it's all the municipal. It actually is the Joint Planning Commission meeting. But they're going to oh, they're going to combine it with a public hearing, and so all the municipalities, all five, is it a Thursday? We'll have a a quorum. Seventeen. Okay. What's the time? Thursday. What time? Seven o'clock. It's at Highland Township. Okay, that was my next question. Yeah, Seven p.m. Switch. The location switched for the next two years. What's that address? Right behind the Western Bridge. Right behind Western Bridge. Tolbahawk and Fort Eleven Tolbahawk and Fort Road. Uh, Turn, right, turn right before the ambulance and it's right there. You're right there. You'll run right into it. <laughs> you'll you'll, you'll just, just remind me. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next item is to update the saldo and fees, stormwater management ordinance and fees. This includes uh, the, what the saldo is a subdivision and land development ordinance is from 1991 and fees are from 2005. Stormwater management ordinance and fees are both from 2002. And Jim McCarthy was kind enough to send us a copy of why missing fee schedule, which we use for comparison. Again, ideally, um, Peter has this information on a database. It would be wonderful again to have it up here um, so we could display it. Again, another issue that has come to us our, that our hasn't costs, been updated. Our fees do not cover our costs. No, no. And and so more updates that we need to do to keep up with the times. So that's another discussion when Peter's here, probably more so the workshop thing, so we could hash things out a bit more. Um, the next item for discussion is the Main Street Traffic Study. Uh, this is performed for the stop signs at Church in Maine, Water in Maine, Sharf in Maine uh, by Traffic Planning and Design Company, and we're waiting for that report. Uh, building security. Um, this is an issue for when we're in the office alone and there's low visibility with respect to anyone approaching the door. So Tri-County Security was out to evaluate a buzz-in type system where the door would be locked and the secretary could buzz in whoever was at the door. Um, he's also suggesting that we put a camera outside. The quote is for $1,238.93. And that does include a camera. It does? Well, it says video, so I, guess. Excellent. I should look up the number on, I just Googled it and yeah, it is a camera. Thank you. Zimmerman Electric is working on a quote for the Porsche light. I'd like to approve that. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve for Tri-County Security to place a buzz-in system 
that um, includes a camera and the security buzzer so the secretary can allow people in for the amount of $1,238.93. Thank you. I have a question. Just a minute. Okay. Roll call. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Go ahead. When the building is being used by <laughs> no organization, we'll get that answer. Yeah. yeah. I think it, it, it's when the when the system is alarmed. I, yeah. I would assume it's different. Um, we'll have to ask them that. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I for think asking he can that. set it up so that yeah. it stays open or it's on the buzzer. Probably. But I would like you to have him check that door because I if I hit that door hard enough, I bet I could knock it off <laughs> and get in anyway. Well, no. why don't you make a motion to replace that door, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Can you, us, can you get us an estimate on it? Uh, you can we have estimates. Yeah, me too. I'm sure they're, they're yeah, old. It's in there. It's from last year. Yeah. Um, let me look quickly. Um, I know that. Because I can tell you it's going to take a while to get the door. Oh, yeah. We know that. I'm replacing a door at home, and uh, it won't be until June. Yeah. And this was from November. That's why I can't find it. But yeah, so okay. some of these estimates include the door. I mean, do you want me to call around to get more? I can. Um, it's not going to be. It's not going to be a huge expense. Just get a couple. They were calling years when we found the different. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The lumber's going up. But that door's ready to fall off. Yeah. So you're going to put a buzzer on a door that I can open without the buzzer. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> well, again, like most people, you'd like to think are citizens and it's a deterrent to the right kind of people if people want in people are going to get in there's nothing to steal yeah, except for lots of people so right. that's my feeling yeah. we, we we shall do our best please okay. if you if you have the time if you wouldn't mind giving a call yeah I, I can't get anyone to come in here it's, it's nearly impossible so all right, last item is uh, Myers Insurance. We received a letter requesting services for fire company and township. I did not have any time to review that. Did you, it's Jim? Just basically a solicitation letter. Okay, thank you. And nothing more needs to be done with that. I'll just put it on because we have it. Thank you. Few companies that are willing to municipalities. Yep. And won't do you much good to get any bids because you're going to get bid from the same place. And you were kind enough to review the materials yeah. and, and looked at last year and felt they were sufficient. So they treat us pretty well. P uh, PSAT has negotiated pretty good deals. That's good. All right. All right. I have no further comments. Jim, do you have any further comments? Uh, well, I, I saw that we got the report from uh, Kraft on some of the properties that are still deficient. And I know that there's some some dates on those for deadlines. I just want to make sure that we follow through on them. Andy, do you have any comments? I do not. Thank okay. you. Fred? Um, there was some question I, I came up recently about the Stonecroft Village. Okay. Okay. And I just want to let you know where that stands right now. Obviously, I think the, the roads are going to be overlaid this summer with okay. the, with the, the uh, final coat. Um, we did do an inspection and we marked out um, the necessary road base repair areas. And, the, and they, based on that, they went out and got a cost estimate to do that overlay work. And we have more than enough money in escrow in case they don't do that, okay, mm -hmm. to cover that. Um, the other thing that we're going to be doing is about two weeks before they do the paving, we're going to go back out and remark because you never know what happens over the winter. Mm -hmm. So um, that way we'll get anything that needs to be done uh, up to the moment. Mm -hmm. So have you addressed the curbs as well? I'm sorry. Have you addressed the curbs? The curbs? Yeah. The curbs in many cases are are split. Are they? And they've been filling it in with caulking, basically. Okay, well, I'm going to caulk it. It's a pretty I check use curves. The word, okay. It's a pretty poor. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a note of that. I had an issue after the winter. 
Yeah, it be even worse. Yeah. Check the curve before paving. That way, if there's if they need repair on the curves, they can do that before right. they start paving. And I think Jim's been out there and looked at it. Yeah. I know Jim's been out and looked at the the detention basin. There were still some problems there that need to be resolved. But again, it's the middle of winter. You can't you can't really do anything about it. There's issues right there, and I understand before they leave, they have to drain the pond and do some yeah. issues. There's yeah. some issues there. So. Yeah. So, but the, you know, that's all on our radar, and we okay. do have a, a program set up ready to go when the time comes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sue, do you have any comments? I'll just review the police report since Peter isn't here. Oh, um, let's see here. Miscellaneous calls for service two, telephone assignment 16, residential alarms two, fire advisor, EMS fire advisories eight. Traffic accidents to security checks 36. Nothing further than further than mm -mm. okay. And I'd like to adjourn the meeting at 822. There a second? Second. Roll call. I Irene. Hi. <laughs> St. Peter. Uh, Jim. Hi. All right, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.